Hey guys and welcome to beautiful Belgium. In this video we're actually going to be exploring the Porte de Namur, Louise area of Brussels, which is a really cool area with a lot of really cool shops, a lot of luxury shops too, and also an ethnic area which is really unique to Brussels. But at the same time, well, because we are in Belgium and it is the heart of Europe, well, there's a lot of history in this place, so there's a lot of really cool older monuments to see. And uh, yeah, I think that this is really going to be a really fun video. So without any further ado, let's explore. Port de Namur or Namur Gate in English is located in the municipality of Ixel in Brussels. Named after the Namur Gate, which was one of the gates of the second wall of Brussels, nowadays Port de Namur denotes the Ixel neighborhood where the gate formerly stood, rather than the former gate itself. This region is known for its affluent shopping district, divided into two parts by Avenue Louise, and is generally considered an affluent area of the city particularly noted for its communities of European and Congolese immigrants. This is one of the reasons why I love Port de Namur. It's basically because they have so many shops right here. Like for example, the street that I'm standing at right now, it's Chaussée d'Ixelles, which is a really long commercial street. And it does go on for quite a while. But also what I like is that the stores are not too expensive. There's obviously a lot of cheap stuff, but at the same time, there's also stores that have normal prices and you can find pretty much everything. But also if you just go a little bit further, well, you have the Louise area, which is basically our kind of Beverly Hills. It's, it's not really Beverly Hills or Rodeo Drive. It's not comparable, but at the same time, they do have a lot of stores. So I do like the fact that this area basically has your regular shopping area, but then at the same time, you can walk a little bit and then you get to the more fancy shops. And this is kind of like the power of Brussels and a small city. Everything is close by. Even though nowadays the street is called Chaussée d'Ixelles, its history is long and complicated. In the 13th century, it was called Zwartenberg, meaning steep mountain, because of part of its relief, which was sloping and which complicated the transport of goods such as wood and beer to the capital. But in the 15th century, it was renamed to Chaussée de Namur and was redeveloped with paved road at the end of the 17th century. Since 2018, this road is semi-pedestrian and has mentioned a very popular street for shopping. I did mention that this area is really multicultural and here I am standing in the Matongue quarter of Belgium, which is basically the African quarter of Brussels. And I really love this area because there's really a lot of different stores that have a lot of clothes from Africa. There's a lot of really cool fruits that are actually originally from Africa. There's a lot of wig stores and hairdressers. And this area was actually settled after the Congo had its independence and a lot of people from Congo came and immigrated to Belgium. So once they had this area, they baptized it Matongue because it's kind of like Kinshasa where there's a lot of stores and a lot of things to discover. And I really love this blend of African and European culture all into one quarter. The core of Matongue was formed in the late 1950s by the foundation of Maïsaf, an abbreviation of Maison Africaine or African House, which served as a center and residence for university students from the Belgian Congo. During the 60s and into the 70s, the area was a well-known meeting place for students and diplomats from Zaire. At the time, they were known locally as Belgicans. Also in this neighborhood, we have Le Vendôme Cinema, which is a must visit for film lovers. This old movie theater shows independent and art house films with a focus on French language cinema. There are a couple of really important streets here in the city center and the street that I'm standing on right now, Avenue Louise, is one of those important ones. It was actually named after King Leopold II's daughter, Princess Louise. And this is the most expensive and luxurious place to find shops in the city center of Brussels. And it is a kind of a far cry from places like Rodeo Drive in Los Angeles. It is a pretty congested area with a lot of trams passing by. But if you're trying to spend some money and you're trying to find some luxury brands, well, you'll probably find it right here. And I do find it kind of cool too that there's so many modern buildings blended in with older buildings and this is kind of like the charm of the center of Brussels and Belgium in general. The 250 meter long part of the Avenue Louise between the Place Louise and the Place Stéphanie is called Le Goulet Louise in French which translates to Louise bottleneck. With two tramway lines and thousands of cars sharing this narrow segment of the avenue, large traffic jams occur there during rush hours. The problem was already obvious in the early 1980s, so a tram tunnel under the bottleneck was built along with the metro station on the Place Louise. Various solutions 
solutions to the traffic problem have been considered. One proposes pedestrianizing the whole segment with trams running on the surface and only delivery vehicles authorized at certain hours. Another one, which is much more costly, involves finishing the tunnel and diverting all trams underground. This may look like a regular tram station to the naked eye, but this is far from a regular station because this is the location where they filmed a music video for a Belgian musical artist called Stromae, and the music video in question was called Formidable. And in this music video, basically, he was, uh, well, he's actually drunk and he's stumbling all over the whole station and uh, they had a bunch of hidden cameras that were shooting him so when he did do that well people thought it was real and even the police actually uh, stopped him and said uh, are you okay but it's a very popular music video and even though belgium doesn't have a lot of filming or a lot of movies happening right here well when they do have filming locations they are pretty memorable and it's right here at Louise. I did mention that the Port de Namur Louise area are truly historical areas in the center of Brussels and as you can tell this building behind me well it is historical looking this is actually the main courthouses of Brussels and it's called the Palais de Justice or the Justice Palace and it truly is a remarkable building. It's huge, first of all, but also the amount of detail within the sculptures and just the, the bricks, how they've been laid, and it's just gorgeous. One thing that I do want to note about this building, though, is that as far as I can remember, it has always been under construction or renovation, and this visit is no exception. They're renovating part of the facade, uh, and even though this building is gorgeous and it is a functional courthouse, I truly hope that eventually one day they will finish this, these monumental works in some ways because the building is really big. But at the same time, it's still gorgeous. There's some sections that are fully renovated and look great. So uh, whenever you are in Brussels, I do say come over to the Justice Palace because, well, it's truly almost godlike in some way. The Palace of Justice of Brussels or Law Courts of Brussels is the most important court building in Belgium. Built between 1866 and 1883 by the celebrated architect Joseph Poilart in the eclectic style, the building is reputed to be the largest constructed in the 19th century and is a notable landmark of Brussels. The total cost of the construction, land and furnishings was somewhere in the region of 45 million Belgian francs. Renovations of the building have been in progress since 2003. These renovations pertain to the repair and strengthening of the roof structure and the walls, as well as putting a new layer on the gilded cupola. Progress is slow and in 2013 it was reported that the decade-old scaffolding was so rusted and unsafe that the scaffolding itself was in need of renovation. Right next to the Palais de Justice and right in front of La Place Poulatz, we have the Infantry Memorial, which is a memorial that was built in order to commemorate all the fallen soldiers from World War I and World War II. And it's just a gorgeous art piece with a bunch of sculptures that have so much detail. And it's just gorgeous just to have this kind of memorial that has a beautiful message to honor all the people who fought during those wars. And also behind it, they have a Ferris wheel that uh, basically lets people who are willing to pay a small fee go on that Ferris wheel and also have a beautiful view of the city. But you don't actually have to go on the Ferris wheel to have a beautiful view because there's a beautiful plaza also on the bottom right behind the memorial that lets people just see it with their naked eye and it's just gorgeous and just in general this Place Poulartz has so many sculptures and things to see that any person that comes to Brussels should definitely stop by. Place Poulart overlooks the city of Brussels and serves as a gigantic square for the Palace of Justice of Brussels. It is located at the top of Mont Potence. The construction of an urban elevator makes it possible to quickly connect the lower part and upper part of the town. The Ferris wheel of Brussels is located at the Place Poulart. The big wheel called the view rises to 55 meters, which totals a panorama of Brussels of more than 100 meters. Next to it is the Infantry Memorial of Brussels, which stands in memory of the Belgian foot soldiers who fought in World War I and World War II. Designed by Edouard Vreken and located across the Anglo-Belgian War Memorial, which depicts a British and a Belgian soldier carved from Brainvilliers stone with reliefs on the side showing Belgian peasants assisting wounded British soldiers. Since I started this video at Porte de Namur, I thought it'd be perfect to actually show you guys La Porte de Halle, which is called the Halle Gate in English. And this is the last remaining gate from the wall that was surrounding Brussels back in the day. Of course, the wall doesn't exist anymore, 
But this building remains and it is used as a museum nowadays to show some of the history of Brussels and how they used the wall to fortify the city. And I also thought that this would actually be the perfect place to end this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it, that you enjoyed coming on this visit of all the cool shopping districts from normal districts to more luxurious districts, as well as a little bit of history. And if you did enjoy it, please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment too, and let me know if I should visit other places in Brussels or in Belgium. I love making these videos and I love visiting Belgium, so I'm pretty sure I could make this happen. But with that, I'll say have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.